this has gone at a pace to get to this stage of, of doing the works and opening it up for the, for the public through this trial, uh, trial period. Um, there must have been quite a few challenges to overcome in, in going at such a pace on a, on a structure that's owned by the Department for Transport, looked after by us in National Highways, um, but brought to life by the work that National Trust are doing. Yeah, definitely. And um, we've had really good channels of communication with your team and with DFT, and we actually were able to take out a lease from the Department of Transport um, in order to occupy and operate this site. Um, for 12 months, uh, which has just been extended to 24 months. Um, so it's been about having that really clear communication, that really solid operational plan. Um, but there was a lot to work through, a lot of detail, uh, the devil was in the detail. Um, and we've also then worked very closely with the planning authority as well to, to make sure all of those kind of consent pieces have lined up. Yeah, yeah, and it's never straightforward dealing with, with multiple ownerships, with old listed structures. Um, the engineering complexity, um, the fact that there will have been, as you mentioned, you know, inhabitants already, you know, that, that nature has taken hold of the structure, um, but obviously we, we, we're putting the garden in. I know for us, we, we have over 3,000 assets around England, Scotland and Wales that we, that we look after in the historical railways estate. Not all of them are as big and as beautiful as, as, as the viaduct that we're stood on. Um, but where there are opportunities, obviously, we're really keen as well. We look, we were so pleased when um, National Trust came forward with a, a partnering opportunity to to bring it back to life and and, and, and bring some community um, investment and and benefit. Absolutely, and I guess that's the big that's the big takeaway here. This isn't something that any one organisation can do on their own, and it's absolutely a partnership project. Um, and it's, it's driven by the local community, as I say, it was something that they have really championed. Um, and we can see here from the partner plots that we're stood in, um, this isn't something we have solely designed. These, these plots here have been designed by local community groups. They just switch over as well. We've just had um, Hume Community Garden Centre come in and do this one, and this is um, So the City. Um, so they're all different themes and concepts, and they've worked with their members and their volunteers to make these happen and bring these to life. Yeah. Um, so it really is about that partnership working. And they keep it fresh, don't they? Because the, the pond wasn't here originally, I don't the think. The pond wasn't here, it's brand new. And we have recently had some ducks take up residence here. Excellent. So we've got um, via ducks trending on, uh, <laughs> on Twitter. So that's been great to watch. Um, but yeah, no, it's just been lovely to see different people's ideas and different people kind of coming and, and all those helping hands. We've got volunteers up here um, and community groups that come and keep, keep everything well looked after. Fantastic, fantastic. And, and, and I guess the, the sort of signature piece at the end of the stretch that's been, that's been put into, into trial and, and turned into this, this wonderful garden in the sky is a, a building on a viaduct, <laughs> um, which, uh, which is, is, is interesting and I'm sure had no end of uh, engineering challenge and design challenge. It definitely wasn't easy. I think we all gained a few grey hairs over this one. So um, you can see these beautiful steel trusses that are here trying to navigate well as, as a long linear space the sequencing of, of bringing uh, the structure on site uh, getting that set up in that very short construction window that we had uh, all of the, the sequencing and the logistics were really challenging also access to the site um, so in the end our con contractors had the brainwave of craning that structure in um, and we had to close a road underneath uh, it was it was really touch and go to know if that was going to work and the day that we had everything in place to do it the winds were too high as you'd expect <laughs> as, so yeah. a week later we were really thrilled to see it finally come in uh, craned over and, and uh, very carefully between the trusses uh, that arrived on site we were able to work on that while we put the rest of this structural um, pathway that we see here in place uh, and we were able to keep to programme but it was very tight for that opening window in July. Yeah, uh, fantastic, that's sure. fantastic and what I really like about this building is it, it's glassed on either end so you can really compare old with new and you can see that we've done what about a third of the viaduct yeah, that's um, right. so hopefully this gives the appetite and um, encourages people or, or other organisations to get involved. It's, comes down to money at the end of the day so absolutely to, to really unlock this to, to keep the project going absolutely and our staff as they move people through this space always end on that window because it is that window of opportunity it's it's what comes next what do we do with that second half of the viaduct 
does it cut through? Will it become a thoroughfare? And we're really asking people what they want. Yeah. As I say, 98% of people want uh, access to the site permanently and the majority of those want to see it connect somewhere. So it is about making you know, the funding come through to, to help that happen uh, and to look ahead to what comes next. But we are open until September 2024. So really encouraging people to come, tell us what they think, come and see the space, um, experience being in the space.